Hello everyone, Sinsterard here. Today we'll be discussing a few addendums, corrections, and alterations to the iceberg we examined in the previous Fallout Iceberg video. My last video had some entries with faulty and outdated information, so I apologize for that. I honestly did not expect the iceberg to get as much attention as it did, so I did not put as much time and care into the video as I should have. This video seeks to correct any errors, add in any new information I found on old entries, and toss in a few new entries that I cut out in the last video. These new additions range from Fallout 1 through Fallout 76. As stated in the last video, not every entry or possible entry will make this list. These videos would drag on for far too long if I included every single entry featured in one of the many icebergs found online. If you have not watched the previous iceberg video, I suggest watching that first to get up to speed on the topics we'll be covering today. Also, before we get started, I have to stress that these entries do not reflect my own personal views, I am just relaying the information that is available that I found online. Sometimes entries can be very vague, so if I get anything wrong or you have more information available, please let me know. Alright, before we get started, I also wanted to talk about the state of the channel and how things will look moving forward. If you'd like to skip this section, there are chapters down below for you to do so. First of all, Thank you all so much for the support and love you've shown for the videos. I greatly appreciated it and it's only motivated me to make more videos for you all to enjoy. It continues to amaze me how fast the channel is growing. If you told me two weeks ago I would go from having 160 subscribers to over 3,500, I would probably laugh and say I wish. I honestly did not expect the videos to gain the traction they did, which I think only highlights the mistakes in the video, so once again I apologize for those many mistakes. Secondly though, I am a full-time teacher, meaning that from 6am to as late as 6pm, I am teaching or engaging in school-related functions to some capacity. So unfortunately, this doesn't leave a whole lot of time for editing and creating videos. So during weekends and breaks, that's the only time I'm really able to mostly focus on editing and video creation. So during the school week, a lot of my time and energy goes into teaching, grading, and making sure my students are getting as best an education as I can possibly provide. With that in mind, I hope you can all be patient and understanding with why it takes a bit for me to get videos uploaded. These take a lot of time and effort and I still wind up making mistakes and errors because of my other responsibilities and I'm honestly really sorry about that. I really don't like putting out product that isn't up to stuff but eventually I do have to put it out and not have it take up space on my computer anymore. If this were my full time job I'd be able to pour way more energy and time into these videos but given my responsibilities teaching as a teacher I can't as of right now. Despite this, I'm still going to be doing my damn best on getting these videos out as soon as I reasonably can, and putting as much effort as I possibly can into them. I have some more information at the end of the video on what content will be coming out when I find the time and energy, so stick around for that or you can skip to the end to find out. Also, I'll be opening up a Twitter account here soon that you all can follow if you'd like. I'll post updates on videos, channel related news, and it gives you an opportunity to voice your opinions on videos and on what content you would like to see. Plus, I'd just love to hear from you all. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into the iceberg. Vault Boy Mushroom Cloud Originally, I had stated that the iconic image of the Vault Boy staring off into the distance with his thumbs up was a reference to the old rule of thumb practice wherein an individual who is safely outside of a nuclear blast range holds their thumb up to a mushroom cloud to measure the size of the explosion in order to gauge if the person is outside of the initial radiation zone. However, despite this humor being increasingly popular, the original claim is untrue. According to Tramel Ray Isaac, the artist who created Vault Boy, the Vault Boy is simply showing his positive attitude rather than measuring the size of a mushroom cloud. New Vegas Walking Corpses Originally, I had stated that the Walking Corpses entry could be referring to the Y-17 override harnesses seen within the Old World Blues DLC. In actuality, the entry refers to a glitch wherein under certain circumstances, the corpses of dead NPCs will stand upright, only with their skeleton and certain muscles remaining intact. This glitch extends into Fallout 3 as well, where the same glitch can be seen on rare occasions. Van Buren is still in development. Comments have pointed me in the right direction on this one. Originally, I could not find any reliable information on the topic, but a Eurogamer article published in 2015 states that Brian Fargo, founder of Interplay, trademarked Van Buren in December of 2014 as part of the company In Exile. Supposedly, Brian Fargo and Chris Avalon plan on creating something Van Buren related if and when they have the time and resources to do so. While In Exile does have the trademark, they currently do not hold any licenses for the Fallout franchise. KOTOR uses Van Buren designed documents. 
I actually found this information by complete chance. I was looking for information on another entry later on in this addendum iceberg and just so happened to stumble across this information. This entry refers to the idea that Knights of the Old Republic 2 utilized design documents created for Van Buren, as the newly formed Obsidian Entertainment, composed of former Black Owl employees, developed the Star Wars title. This entry refers to a presentation Chris Avalon gave in 2015, entitled Paper Cuts, Paper Prototyping from Old School RPG to Computer RPG. In this presentation, around the 35 minute mark, Chris discusses the knowledge and skills he gained while working on Fallout and on Van Buren, and mentioned how he had the opportunity to draw upon the design layouts and map sketchings used for Van Buren and how they were transferred into KOTOR 2. Also, a lot of the uh, pen and paper prototyping that I did actually lended itself to be helpful in other games that we did as well. So, for example, Knights Old Republic 2, I got to draw upon a lot of the uh, the uh, sort of uh, area design sketching and map layouts that I'd done as a game master and actually used those as part of the Star Wars license. And a lot of the perspective shots and learning how to actually lay out levels and maps actually end up being directly relevant for Star Wars. While I believe Chris is trying to say that he transferred the skills he learned while being a game master for the Van Buren PMP into the production of KOTOR 2's map layouts and designs, I can see why some might believe that some design docs were repurposed for the Star Wars title. Nuka-Cola is a health hazard. As discussed in the previous video, Nuka-Cola presents some interesting health hazards to the Wastelanders of Fallout. An additional health hazard is the fact that in Fallout, Fallout 2, and Fallout Tactics, the player has the ability to become addicted to Nuka-Cola. This is carried over into Fallout 3 in the form of a Nuka-Cola Quantum addiction. Doc Mitchell Glitch this entry refers to the strange glitch wherein Doc Mitchell will spin his head in circles in unnatural ways at the beginning of New Vegas. An added note is that this glitch can extend to any NPC in New Vegas, in Fallout 3, and in Fallout 4. Star Trek and Fallout 2 In Fallout 2, players can trigger a special encounter out in the wastelands. A shuttlecraft by the name of the Adani 2 crashes into the Earth with three dead Starfleet crew members laying around the crashed shuttle. As stated in the entry name, this is a reference to the Star Trek franchise and the Starfleet scene within the series. A phaser from the show was originally intended to be implemented into the game as well, but the weapon was ultimately cut from the final release. FEV Psychics, also known as Psychers. These individuals, both human and creatures alike, possess supernatural psychic abilities. FEV experiments, radiation, natural selection, and ancient artifacts are known to give individuals psychic abilities. Notable psychers include the four psychers from the Master's Lair, Hakunin, the Arroyo Shaman, Melquir, a miner from Redding, Professor Calvert, a resident of Point Lookout, Bloomseer Poplar, a member of the Tree Miners, Harold, an FEV mutant, the Forecaster, Mama Murphy in Fallout 4, and Lorenzo Cabot, who possesses an alien ancient artifact atop his head. These individuals possess a wide range of abilities, including, but not limited to, control over specific elements, telepathic abilities, animal communication and control, the ability to catch glimpses of the future, and psionic abilities. FEV Rejects This entry refers to specific mutants found within Vault 87 of Fallout 3. Dead subjects found within Vault 87 are quite horrendous, with similar mutations to those of successful super mutant mutations, but have experienced randomized structural growth both internally and externally, resulting in exposed muscle, bones, and organs. These individuals no doubt died in a horrendously painful fashion. One Amingos from Fallout 2 This entry refers to the creatures found within Fallout 2. These entities, rumored to be of extraterrestrial origin, are FEV weapons created for warfare prior to the Great War, similar to the creation of Death Claws. These mutant creatures bear a resemblance to, and are a homage to, the Xenomorphs from Ridley Scott's Alien franchise. A mutated version of the Wanamingo was planned on being featured in Fallout 3, though the creatures were ultimately cut from the final game. Captain Ghoul Approved This entry refers to comments you may find on YouTube videos specifically on Fallout-related videos. Typically stylized in short quick videos no more than a minute long, this YouTuber will leave comments such as these to voice their approval of content and to promote their own Space Raider review show featuring a Captain Ghoul who I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong here, is from space. The Enclave Made Certain Mutants In Fallout 76, players can learn more about and even become a high-ranking member of the Enclave. 
In the Appalachian Wastes, players learned of the Enclave's hand in creating one of the most powerful mutated monstrosities seen in the Wastelands, the Scorch Beasts. The very first Scorch Beast was accidentally created when the Enclave exposed irradiated bats to biochemical weapons in 2083. Instead of destroying the beasts, the Enclave instead attempted to contain and study them, though the creatures made regular appearances above ground by 2084. And by 2086, Secretary Eckhart unleashed them upon the Appalachian region, bringing about the Scorched Plague seen within the game. Cask of Amontillado In Fallout 4, after beginning the quest Old Guns, the players will venture through the castle's armory. During this quest, the player can find a room where the skeletal remains of an NPC can be found chained up inside a wall. This is a reference to the Edgar Allan Poe short story, The Cask of Amontillado, wherein the narrator gets his rival drunk and traps him behind a brick wall to die of eventual starvation, if not suffocation. Plumber's Secret This entry refers to an unmarked location within Fallout 4. This location holds an interesting secret in the ceiling. As by following a line of plungers, the players can find items attached to the ceiling but can be shot down for easy looting. Carhenge Carhenge is an unmarked location in Fallout 4 that features a Stonehenge-like monument made out of destroyed cars. The structure is fairly easy to locate, and most players most likely came across it during at least one of their playthroughs. U.S. Government Bomb Collars Bomb collars, explosive collars, and slave collars all share their origins within the Big Mountain Research and Development Center featured in the New Vegas DLC, Old World Blues. This entry refers to the fact that the U.S. government sanctioned and funded the creation of such collars to the point where the slavers in the post-Great War wastelands used them to keep their prisoners in line. Camp Willow Camp Willow, or Willow Beach as it is known, is the location southeast of the fort that was cut from the final version of New Vegas. Draft maps from New Vegas showed Camp Willow on the eastern border of the map. New Vegas lore states that it was formerly an NCR military camp, but after the first battle of Hoover Dam, a battle took place at the site, which resulted in the camp being utterly destroyed. Fallout 3 Cryolator The Cryolator almost made its appearance earlier than its initial appearance in Fallout 4. A version of the Cryolator was originally intended to appear in Fallout 3, but for some reason, despite having meshes and textures within the game, was cut from the final release of Bethesda's first Fallout entry. Floraland This entry refers to an unused cell within the Fallout 4 add-on, Far Harbor. This cell features quite a few interesting creatures, buildings, and oddities, likely a testing ground for the developers as they built the DLC. It also includes a Fantasia reference. Developer Room this entry could refer to any number of the developer rooms within the games, but I'm going to focus on Fallout 76. Players were able to successfully enter into the secret developer room, hidden within the game either through hacking, glitching, or through some other method. Players were able to loot cases and grab high-end items normally difficult to obtain or have yet to be implemented. Once Bethesda caught wind of this exploit, the studio began handing out bans left and right to anyone foolish enough to enter into the area. Along with the ability to access the area, players also encountered a single NPC named Wooby, which fueled the rumors that NPCs were going to be implemented, as well as poking holes in the claim made by Bethesda that they were unable to implement NPCs. Fallout 2 Timegate This entry refers to the Guardian of Forever within Fallout 2. As a special encounter, the player is able to interact with a giant, ancient-looking portal that has the ability to transport the Chosen One back in time to the events preceding the original Fallout. There, the Chosen One can break the water purification chip of Vault 13 and set in motion the events of the first game. The Guardian of Forever is a reference to an episode of the original Star Trek series entitled The City on the Edge of Forever. In this episode, the crew of the Enterprise come across a sentient portal known as the Guardian of Forever, an ancient gateway to other times and dimensions. It allows Captain Kirk and Spock to travel back to the 1920s on Earth in order to return time to its shape. Deacon is the Lone Wanderer. This entry refers to a Reddit post made by Cool Dr. Money on April 29th, 2016. In this post, Cool Dr. Money lays out their theory on Fallout 4's Deacon being the Lone Wanderer. They make this claim based upon a few pieces of evidence they supposedly collected with these pieces of evidence primarily focusing on Deacon's behavior and attitude, his age in relation to that of the Lone Wanderer by this period, his mysterious nature, and the fact he routinely gets facial reconstruction surgery. Some users became fond of the theory. Others required more evidence to back it up. Ultimately, the decision is yours to believe this theory or not. Brotherhood of Steel Fascist Allegory This entry refers to theories surrounding the Brotherhood of Steel being an allegory for fascism. 
A Reddit post made by Bitter Cock on January 20th, 2018, goes into detail about the parallels between the Brotherhood of Steel's dogma and actions, and the actions of fascist and jingoist organizations that have appeared in history, with specific notes on authoritarianism, nationalism, suppression of opposition, and control of industry and commerce. If you'd like more details, a link to the post will be down in the description. Tunneler is making it out of the divide. This entry refers to the theory, or rather the possibility, that the tunnelers from the New Vegas DLC, Lonesome Road, will eventually escape from the divide and wreak havoc across the continental United States, killing thousands of soldiers and civilians and destabilizing the lands due to their tunnels. This would create chaos in already unstable lands. The debate remains on whether or not these creatures could escape to the wastelands, or if they would be hunted down and exterminated before the threat ever grows too large to control. But, given Ulysses' remarks in Lonesome Road, some may say it's entirely possible for the tunnelers to do so. They'll start emerging throughout the Mojave in time. Might be years. Probably less. They breed fast, hunt in groups, more than enough to bring down the strongest in the Mojave, once they draw blood. Regardless, the debate continues online. Dog Gun I believe this entry refers to the K9000 Cyberdog Gun, obtainable in the New Vegas DLC, Old World Blues. The weapon was designed by researchers at the X8 Research Center, with two prototypes being created. The gun is technically a form of a Cyberdog, with a living dog's brain being utilized within the frame of the gun and firing a 357 Magnum round. The gun has two metal ears, a nose mounted on the jar holding the brain, and the overall vague visage of a dog. The Salanter this entry refers to a cut creature originally intended to be implemented into the first Fallout title. The Salanter are intelligent, FEV-mutated raccoons that escaped from a research facility and developed their own tribe in the burrows. They refer to themselves as the Tribe of Salanter and would have been an interesting creature in the Fallout lore had they been fully realized within the game. Vault 21 Hidden Parts Vault 21 is a location within New Vegas on the New Vegas Strip. As of the events of the game, the location has been turned into a hotel. Inside the tops, if the player will allow Benny the chance to flee when confronting him, an elevator that is normally locked will become accessible to the player. At the end of the ensuing hallway is a locked door that, when opened using console commands, reveals a hidden part of Vault 21. This section has no lights and will end bleeding nowhere. Mysterious Stranger is a player. I believe this entry is a reference to a Reddit post made by Infinity Portal in January of 2020. In this post, Infinity Portal tells a story of finding a level 3 on Fallout 76 near Overseer's Camp. This low-level player was being attacked by a pack of dogs, and, deciding to help the player out, Infinity Portal pulls out his pipe revolver and kills the dogs from a distance. The player stood confused, unsure of who killed the dogs. And Infinity Portal ends the post by stating they had become the mysterious stranger. Tunnelers are human. This entry revolves around the theory that the Reptilian Tunnelers, featured in the Lonesome Road DLC for New Vegas, were, at some point in time, humans. Some theories speculate that the Tunnelers are actually mutated descendants of the Hopeville inhabitants. And still Ulysses himself speculates that maybe, the Tunnelers were always there, and the Great War simply awoken them and brought them to the surface. Whether they be created from radiation, pre-war biological experiments, FEV mutations, or a mixture of environmental factors is unknown at this time. Given the rise of the mole miners in Appalachia not too long after the bombs fell due to radiation, it's easy to see why some might theorize that the Tunnelers are some sort of mutated descendant of humans. New Vegas Postgame Content This entry refers to the postgame content ultimately cut from New Vegas. Without the assistance of mods, completing the main quest of New Vegas ends the game, with the player booting back into the world just prior to completing the quest. While Obsidian originally planned on including this cut content, development time constraints forced the team to focus on other aspects of the game. Chris Savalone has gone on record stating that the post-game content was fairly minor, with minimal reactivity to the events of Hoover Dam around the Mojave Wastelands. A few new characters would spawn into the world, and a few new pieces of dialogue would generate for certain characters, but the ultimate intention was not so much to add more content, but they give the players the opportunity to continue exploring the world of New Vegas. The team even originally experimented with having DLC continue the story after Hoover Dam, but due to budget constraints, a good chunk of DLC money went into fixing and optimizing the game as best as they could. Removed Spouse Revival Quest This entry refers to speculation surrounding a cut quest known as The Replacement in Fallout 4. 
These speculations refer to the possibility of the questline resulting in the player's character's spouse being revived by being recreated as a Gen 3 synth thanks to the Institute. I have not found any information confirming this to be true, just theories and speculations by fans and Fallout community circles. Hoover Dam Adult Party This entry refers to a presentation Chris Avalon gave on the early Van Buren design and story documents. These documents pointed towards the NCR attacking Caesar's Legion during one of their Saturnalia-style parties. Doom Fallout Shared Universe This entry, mentioned to me by the great Zombie Killer 93 refers to a door in the 2016 Doom reboot featuring the vault Tech logo underneath another sticker as well as a Vault Boy-themed bobblehead that can be found within the game as well. Two small easter eggs hidden in the game by the developers at id Studios. Vault Zero. Unless this is referring to something else, I'm pretty sure this entry is just a straightforward mention of Vault Zero seen within Fallout Tactics. In Vault Zero, the brains of geniuses were cryogenically frozen for preservation beyond the Great War, though this experiment led to many of the brains suffering brain damage, developing dementia, and a myriad of other issues. Fallout 3 predicted Deepwater Horizon. This entry actually refers to the number station creepypasta mentioned in the previous video. In the creepypasta, there is mention of an oil spill occurring within the story on the same date that the Deepwater Horizon oil spill occurred in real life. Klingons and Van Buren In Van Buren design documents from Bomb 001, an orbital space station, a joke added in by the development team at Black Owl Studios mentioned the lack of random encounters surrounding the space station. The documents indicated there would be no encounters unless the player were to be intercepted by Klingons on the way to the space station. Given the couple of Star Trek easter eggs hidden in their previous titles, it's not too hard to believe Klingons would have made a cameo appearance in the cancelled title. Sierra Madre is the Overlook Hotel. This entry refers to the numerous parallels between the Sierra Madre and the Dead Money expansion and the Overlook Hotel featured within Stephen King's The Shining. The two locations share many similarities. The Overlook and the Sierra Madre are both referred to as traps luring people in, though for different reasons. There are hostile ghosts brought about by the many deaths in both locations, certain characters dying and being resurrected as holograms slash ghosts, even a bartender that serves the player, similar to the character of Lloyd within The Shining. There are more details involved, but that is best saved for another video. Special thanks to Damien for this one. Dead Money Inspired by Wizard of Oz in another interpretation of the New Vegas DLC, this entry refers to a Reddit post drawing comparisons between Dead Money and The Wizard of Oz. The character is encouraged to follow a specific path, meets people who mirror individuals from back home and are suffering from problems mirroring those of characters from Oz, Dean his heart, Dog his brain, Christine her voice and courage, and is instructed to perform tasks by a hologram and a man behind a curtain. If you'd like to know more information or see this post yourself, click on the link down in the description. Lonesome Road is the rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. This entry refers to some inspiration behind Lonesome Road being that of the famous poem written by the English poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge and published in 1798. This poem tells the story of an old sailor, the Mariner, telling his tale to a guest at a wedding ceremony. The Mariner's ship is hit with storms and pushes the ship towards the Antarctic. An albatross appears and the Mariner subsequently kills it, angering the crew and the sea spirits, resulting in the spirits forcing the ship to wander adrift lost at sea. The crew forces the mariner to wear the albatross he killed around his neck before death itself and the nightmare life and death begin to play games of dice to decide the fate of the crew. One by one, the crew members die, leaving only the mariner alive on board. After he praises the sea creatures and the oceans, the spirits lift some of his guilt, letting the albatross fall from around his neck, raising the dead crewmates to steer the ship towards land and forcing him to walk the earth, spreading his tale to all who would listen. Lonesome Road is specifically inspired by Part 6, Stanza 11, like one that on a lonesome road doth walk in fear and tread, and having once turned around walks on, and no more turns his head, because he knows a frightful fiend doth close behind him tread. These few lines set the groundwork for the thematic structure of the DLC, as well as providing comparisons between Eddie launching the ICBMs as the albatross within the poem, and the marked men in the DLC being comparable to the dead crew rising once more. The Moon DLC During the life of Fallout 4, fans had begun speculating that a Moon DLC would appear in the game due to a few in-game pieces of evidence. For instance, the Museum of Freedom appears to show a battle happening on the surface of the Moon, a Live and Love cover art depicting a dog and man in space, and a Guns N' Bolts issue with the title, The Moon, a Communist Doomsday Device? 
Some players took this as a clue towards a future expansion to the game, one that unfortunately never came to pass. Given Black Isle's Van Buren design documents including a space station, Fallout 3 including Mothership Zeta, and New Vegas including the Bright Brotherhood's spacefaring interests, it's not too hard to see why some fans hope to see an expansion take them to the moon. Unreleased New Vegas Beta I believe this entry refers to the New Vegas Beta build that was showcased at E3 2010 that featured several differences from the final release, such as the New Vegas Strip having no gate sectioning it off, having more NPCs, images, textures, and dialogue being different, and several more differences here and there. As of 2021, I do not believe this beta build has been made publicly available online. As it currently stands, it's most likely a lost build. Flying Bananas Can't Talk This entry refers to a note found within Fallout 3 in a cell inside the Germantown headquarters. The note contains several lines of the following phrase, Flying Bananas Can't Talk, before ending with, They just want you to believe they can. Caesar is a communist. I believe this entry spawned from a Reddit post by Ascari777 that discusses Caesar being a product of communist literature. The hypothetical situation posed by Ascari777 wonders if Caesar, as a follower of the apocalypse, could have had access to communist literature as well as access to propaganda surrounding communist China. The Reddit post, and some other more serious posts and videos online, posit that Caesar could be following a specific version of communism as a counter to the NCR's ideology. There used to be a video essay on discussing the Marxist sociological analysis of Caesar's Legion on YouTube, but the video has long since been taken down. Links will be in the description. Godhead applies to Fallout. Before I jump into this entry, I just have to state I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to Elder Scrolls lore. I really don't know anything about it. The Godhead, as far as I'm aware, is an in-universe explanation for the entirety of the Elder Scrolls series and lore. Referred to as the Godhead, this entity is considered the one supreme being, transcending all other godlike and godly deities within the Elder Scrolls lore, with the entire Elder Scrolls universe being this one entity's dream. This theory posits that the Godhead applies to Fallout as well, possibly meaning that the universe of Fallout is part of the Godhead's dream. Again, I'm no Elder Scrolls expert, so take what I say with a grain of salt. And there you have it. Corrections, additional information, and new entries to my previous Fallout Iceberg. I apologize if any information is wrong, I went with what I could find online. Some of these entries are rather obscure and difficult to find information on. If you have any additional information or corrections, I'd love to hear more in the comment section. And once again, I apologize for not including any topics you felt should have been included in the first Iceberg or in this addendum video. Up ahead for future videos. I plan on doing videos on another Cosmic Horror video game, Sunless Sea, a couple videos on Fallout Cut content, a video on my favorite indie game, Hyperlight Drifter, and possibly a video on the Clipperfield ARG, as I was incredibly fascinated by it when I was younger. If you have any suggestions for videos, I would love to hear them in the comments. The channel is still growing, so I'm open to suggestions for future videos. Once again, thank you for watching.